Hi, my name is Chilton Webb, and what you're seeing is motion capture done inside a VR headset. Uh, this is Glycon. Glycon is a product that allows you to do pretty decent motion capture using just your VR headset. And in this case, I'm going to use some additional Vive trackers to make it even look even better. I'm using the uh, HTC Vive Index, which has finger tracking. And so I've got some, uh, some, some finger tracking here already. If I wanted to uh, record that, I can do that too. So without further ado, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you this from my perspective using VR mode, which I can do by summoning the console and switching it to VR camera. Now you see what I see. Now, what I want to show you here is the cool new stuff for the HTC Vive users. We're going to go over here to tracker, the tracker icon, boop, and we have a little thing here that says click the start button below to begin. So we're going to tap that with the white button. And as you can see here, it lists T0, HMD, right and left. Well, this isn't exactly what we want. So if you get this, if you, if you come in here um, to Glycon and you see this, it's because one of the trackers, in this case, one of the trackers on my feet, uh, it's, was not actually active at the time that we started up Glycon. So I'm going to start, I'm going to quit the Glycon and start it again. And we're back. So now I'm going to go into VR camera again and take this another look. Now we see that we have T0, HMD, right, left, and T6. That's because we have two trackers, T0 and T6. And it's, this order is going to change. It's never, it's never basically the same. It has to do with how Steam loads the trackers and in what order it decides things need to be loaded. So we've got these uh, trackers set up here. This is one foot and this is on the other foot. What I want to do right now is hide all of this. So I'm just going to click and drag it out of the way. And then with the other button, the top button on my controller, I'm going to grab the guy here and pull him over here. And now I'm going to select on my list, I'm going to select T0. And I'm going to hit the, uh, I'll use, which one is it? The top button uh, on the controller to click that. And then I'm going to select one of these feet. I got the wrong foot. We'll put it on this one. There we go. And now when I move that foot, look at that. Okay. Now, if you notice, that foot is not correctly on the ground just yet. We're going to fix that in just a second. I'm going to click on T6, and I'm going to go over here to this one. And now I have both of my feet. And if you'll notice, not only are my feet not on the ground, they're not even level uh, with each other. And that's because I have two different types of tracker harnesses on my legs. One of them is a short one, uh, this one, and one's a larger one on this one. Well, normally that's a problem, but not anymore. With the lower button on the controller, I want to kind of watch the screen at the same time I'm doing this, but if I click in the air and drag, anywhere that I drag, it's going to move this, you see the little flag here? It's moving it relative to the way that I'm moving my, my hand controller. So I want to move it until it looks like it's placed on the ground. And now I want to do the same thing with the other controller. Both feet are now uh, tracking. As you notice, there's a little bit of slip though. And that's because this foot is not actually tracking properly on the ground. I'm going to see if I can fix that. Okay. All right, so that's a little better. So with that in mind, uh, we've got all that set. I want to save this. And when it saves, it goes back to the begin setup and we're good. Okay, so I could pull this out of the way and do something else now. And I'm going to. We're going to hop into record mode and do some really simple recording. Oh, um, yeah, we'll just do we'll hop into record mode. So hitting this button right here takes me into record mode. The first thing I want to do is move my stop button by clicking on this thing here so it's a little closer to me. And by clicking on the top, uh, button on this screen. Anywhere that I move this stop button, it's just going to stick there in place. And that way, when I finish my recording, I just move this mouse, move the white button through it to stop recording. It'll make a little more sense in a couple of seconds. I'm going to put it right over here. Okay, and now I'm going to start recording. I'm just going to touch this with a white dot. Hello. Oh, we got to wait for the three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hello, this is my recording that I'm going to export later as an FBX file and use it in my awesome video game or computer animation. Now, what you probably noticed is it stopped recording. That's because I touched the button. That's how that works. So we're going to do this one more time. I'm going to move the stop button so that it's a little um, more conspicuous over here. Start recording. Three, two, one. 
hello, this is my video that I'm going to use. And I'm going to actually, okay, all right, all right, fine. It's not a video. We're exporting FBX or mocap data like BVH data that we're going to use in Blender or a game engine or something like that. And this is the end of my recording. I can do all kinds of cool stuff with my hands and my feet. And I can walk around. Yeah, jeez, I think I just kicked the computer. Okay, so I'm just going to stop this now. All right, now we pull up our, um, pull our HUD back up and go over here. And I can either uh, enhance, I can either export a version that's going to be enhanced for UE4, or I can export a normal FBX animation. The normal FBX animation works perfectly in Unity out of the box. If you're going to use UE4, you want to use this one. And you're just going to tap this, and it'll give you a green arrow, a uh, green check mark, uh, if that's what you want. And then you export it, and you're done. Or if I had been smart and uh, wanted to export BVH, I could do that here by using use BVH. But I did not. I did not. I used, um, I used FBX. And this is an important distinction to make. Only FBX has the enhance for UE4 because UE4 doesn't support BVH out of the box. So you want to make sure this is set to FBX if you're using the Unreal. Set it to BVH if you want to use something like Blender, which has limited support for um, text-based uh, uh, FBX. All right, well, that's basically it. That's the Steam version of Glycon. Um, and it is going out to all of the users, uh, all of the pro users. And, and I'm also going to send out one time, I'm going to send out this version to all of my users uh, in general, whether you're a Steam version user or a, um, what's the other one? Uh, the indie users. Everyone's going to get a copy of this because it fixes some stuff in BVH. I want to make sure everyone's at least got that going. Um, and then from this point forward, if you are an indie user, you, you, when you buy it, you basically get the version that's out when you buy it. Uh, pro users get updates for a year. And then elite users get updates for infinity. Plus, elite users will get access to some of the new stuff that's coming out, such as we have a new version of this that is um, a 2D interface, does not use your, your VR headset, instead just uses trackers and allows you to do full body motion capture uh, of a person in a room. Uh, without having to have them actually put on VR equipment. They just put the trackers on and go. It's really cool. It's coming out soon. Elite users will get a copy of that first. Um, and then pro users uh, will get a discount. I think that's going to be the plan. And um, everyone else will probably get some kind of a smaller discount. That's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. My name is Chilton Webb. You can find me everywhere on the internet. And you can go to glycon3d.com or facebook.com slash VR for more information and to get yourself a copy of this action. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Stay safe. Okay, so these are the two um, controllers I had set up in that video. If you'll notice, one of them uh, is high up on the leg and it's a, a thicker band. And the other one is a smaller band and it's lower on the leg. And um, it doesn't really matter. You can adjust that offset in Glycon now and you don't have a problem there. Uh, so that's how that works. Now these are also the 3D printed um, tracker mounts that then the STL for these is on the website. If you don't want to buy uh, the the official um, Steam mounts off of Amazon or something like that, you can actually uh, just if you have access to a 3D printer and a hardware store that sells these bolts, uh, you can you can do that um, really inexpensively. I mean, it's, this whole thing cost me maybe a dollar. Um, so the STL will be on the website and feel free to grab that for free.